I served at Lon Morris College for eight years, um, and I loved that. The, the students were eternally different, eternally entertaining, always frustrating, always fulfilling. Plus, I love basketball, so I got to watch the Bearcats several times. Um, I love that. I've loved all of them, really. Um, the churches that I have now are absolutely wonderful. I'm going to, to miss the, the people. I, I was a nurse, and I was an ICU ER nurse, and I don't know if you know about them, but we're not kind, gentle people. <laughs> but uh, I had been in church for a while. Um, had grown up being screamed at every week that I was going to hell, so I didn't want that anymore. I love the, the quietness of the Methodist Church. Um, and it was very unexpected. I was sitting in Disciple Bible Study. I, <laughs> I had this thing that was right here out of my vision, and it was said ordained ministry. And I put my head down because I thought, somebody's getting a call to ministry, and I've interrupted it. But it went, it, it followed me home. And the, the thing is, it's so clear. It was aerial bold. I mean, that's what it was. <laughs> So about two days later, I went in and talked to my pastor, and uh, she gave me the book to start. I never looked back, given the fact that there were frequently raised voices in my home. Um, the raised voices of my young childhood Christianity were frightening to me, and I hated going to church. I dreaded it every week. When I got into the nursing, into the emergency room, uh, into the ICU. I think the turning point for me, the breaking point, was um, a young man that would come in periodically for his chemo. He was 20 years old. Uh, my oldest son was about 14 at that time, so there didn't seem to be a big gap there. And we would talk. Uh, and I began to pray to the God that I didn't really believe in. I know he has to die. I understand that. Please, please don't make it terrible because this was back in the day. We have much better drugs now and, and always. It was terrible. It was terrible. It's been 40 years. He died screaming, shouting out numbers. And that broke it all the way. That's when I said, I don't know if there is a God, but if there is, I don't want to have anything to do with him. I prayed and I prayed not for myself, but for someone else. Many years later, what I understood was the Holy Spirit was with John, was there in the fear and the pain, was with his father who was on his knees praying at his bedside. And you know, there's that, uh, that phrase in the Bible, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Well, it's even for those of us who don't love the Lord or think we don't. Because what I understood was that I was looking at the surface of everything and that I'd put my own personal grief for this young man who reminded me of my, my child ahead of his family, even though I was able to talk to him ahead of my co-workers who also needed comforting. And I wasn't the central person in that scene. But it took me many, many years to forgive God for that. And to know that uh, after seeing that terrible thing, I can acknowledge that whatever is in my life, the Lord will never leave me.